Welcome to Early Bird Picker. My name is Rafa. I'm so excited to be sharing this video with you guys today. This is your reseller's guide to flipping vintage hats. I want to share with you today everything that you need to know about reselling vintage hats so that you can multiply your money. So I'm a reseller. I resell just a little bit of, of everything, just nearly any category, but selling vintage hats is one of my absolute favorite things to sell, and here's why. The first reason is vintage hats are relatively easy to find. I find them at garage sales all the time. And the second reason is they're relatively cheap whenever you find them. For the most part, whenever I find vintage hats at garage sales, people are asking a dollar or less. I rarely pay two bucks even for them. A lot of times they get them for a quarter. Reselling vintage hats doesn't require any testing. That's one of the best things. So, you know, with electronics, when you're selling electronics, you've got to take it home, wonder if it's going to work or not. With a hat, you can check out the condition right there on the spot. You don't have any questions about it. As far as conditioning the hat, whenever you're looking at it, deciding whether to buy it, usually you can figure that out within 5 to 15 seconds, so it takes very little time to figure out if you want to buy the hat or not. Another plus, if you're a reseller and you resell a lot of things, especially if you have limited storage space, um, selling vintage hats, as far as storing them goes, takes up very little storage space. You can a lot of times just put them in one box all together. They fit, you know, just one alongside each other like that, just in front and back of each other. And they're very lightweight. They don't take up much room. Whenever I'm picking up something to resell, I think about taking the pictures of it. Uh, since it's a hat, it's super small. It's not going to be hard to get a good picture of it. And you just take several different angles and it's easy to do. Another thing that I think about whenever I'm buying something to resell is re how hard or easy it's going to be to ship. Uh, shipping a hat almost couldn't be any easier. You just throw it in a box and it's lightweight, ready to go. The final reason why I love selling vintage hats is demand for vintage is super high right now, and hats especially, and people love finding old brands, logos, teams, just any type of hat that's vintage, that has a following. It doesn't even matter if it's used. Usually you can sell your vintage hats pretty easily. So like I was saying earlier, most of the time you're going to find vintage hats at garage sales, possibly thrift stores, but what sparked me to make this video is I found some vintage hats on Facebook Marketplace. I made a deal where I bought a lot of them for some good money, and I hope to resell them for a lot more. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll show you the haul. I'll show you each hat, what I paid for it, and what I hope to resell it for. So I want to talk to you about every factor that goes into determining the value of your vintage hat, what you can expect to get for it, and the factors that will drive the price of your hat up. There's a lot of factors that make the price of your hat more valuable, but in my uh, summation, what it comes down to are the combination of three things, how in demand the hat is, how unique it is, and the subject matter. So what's cool about eBay is you can search the last three months of sales data. And so doing that, this right here is the hat that has sold, at least that I can find for the most amount of money. It sold for $12,200 and it is a vintage Los Angeles Lakers Kobe hat. So the subject matter is great. Right now, a lot of people are wanting the Lakers because of Kobe's death and they're really just buying a lot of Lakers stuff. And it is a really unique hat. There are no none other none others that I can find that are like it. And the demand for it is really high, like I was saying, because people are really interested in the Lakers. On the other end of the spectrum, we have this hat that has been sitting in my store for over a year before I knew more about selling hats. And so this is a vintage Caravan Cattle Company hat that I bought. So while this one is unique, there's not a lot of these. The demand for this one is not super high. This is a hat, um, or this is a, a country dance bar that used to be in our town. And so this is like specific to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So the demand is just not there. And so whenever you're buying vintage hats, I don't want you to make the same mistake I do and have stuff that sits in your store for over a year. Over a year. So I'm gonna go over those things that will influence the price of your uh, hat and make sure you follow along and check off as many of these as you can to get the most amount of money. So when you're at the garage sale looking through the box of vintage hats, here's the very first thing that should come to mind when you're choosing whether, uh, whether to buy the hat or not. You don't have to buy all of them. And so you just gotta cherry pick the ones that are gonna sell the best. The first thing that I think of is subject matter. Subject matter determines the demand for your hat. 
The more well-known the subject matter of the hat, the more buyers are gonna be available on eBay and other platforms that you sell on. Here are some of the subject matters that do really well. The first is products. So an example of this would be Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola, products that have a really strong following. Along the same lines, companies do really well. So this would be something like Harley Davidson, Apple Computers, or John Deere. Sports team hats and NASCAR do really well. So do um, farmer hats and trucker hats. And on top of that, cities do pretty good too. I sold some vintage um, Crested Butte hats. I sold two of them. I found two like back-to-back -back weeks. And I think they were both corduroy and they sold really well, even in fairly used condition. So the first factor that you want to consider is subject matter. The second factor that you want to consider is brand. There are five brands that do really well for reselling vintage hats. And I'm going to go over those with you. And I'm also going to show you the logo of the brand so that you know what to watch out for. These are five Bolo brands. The first brand that you want to watch out for is K brand products. And so you'll find a lot of trucker, vintage trucker um, and farmer hats with these. And what's interesting, what's interesting about that brand is they sell in lots a lot of the time, but the highest single hat that sold on eBay in the last three months that was K brand products was $300 in used condition, by the way. The second vintage brand that you want to watch out for is Starter. So here's Starter's logos. In the last three months, the highest uh, value starter hat that sold on eBay was $4.99. It was an Oakland Raiders hat in used condition. The third brand that you want to watch out for is Logo Athletic. The highest value selling hat that sold in the last three months on eBay by Logo Athletic was uh, Sacramento Kings for $500 an NBA team. The fourth vintage hat brand that you want to bolo is New Era. New Era, here's their logos. Their highest selling hat in the last three months was LA Dodgers vintage hat for $299.99 in brand new condition. And the fifth and final and maybe most important hat that you want to watch out for the brand is Sports Specialties. So here's their logo for Sports Specialties. Um, that LA Lakers hat that I was talking about that sold for over $12,000, that was a sports specialties hat. And then they actually have a couple others that have sold for 1000 So as a major bolo brand that you want to be searching for. So after subject matter and brand, the next thing that you want to consider is whether the hat is new or pre-owned. Obviously, if the hat is in brand new condition, it's going to sell for even better money. And if it has the tags and the stickers on it, um, that's going to be even better. So when you're listing the item, you can list the hat as new with tags, NOS, which is new old stock. You can list it as dead stock. All of those things would help out your listing if you had that in the title of your description. So this fourth category that you want to consider is probably my favorite one. It's the uniqueness of the design, how rare it is, how special it is, um, just basically how uh, appealing to the eye it is. And there's a lot of different things um, that make the logo special. And the first one would be big logo. If you are um, if you are a reseller of shirts, that's kind of like the same thing as an all over print. So um, here are some examples here of big logo that just kind of go all over the hat. Those always sell for more money. Something else that makes the hat unique that you want to watch out for is the shark tooth and the double shark tooth. Here are two examples of those. Along with the shark tooth, you have something similar. It's the diamond or the diamond spike. Another thing to watch out for, uh, a lot of vintage hats will have these ropes on them where the front panel meets the visor or the bill. A lot of people are looking for that when they're looking for vintage, hat, vintage hats. So make sure to say that in your listing if it's got the rope. Another thing to watch out for is championship logos. And so say if it was the Chicago Bulls winning a championship, a lot of times those hats that call out the year go for good money. Sometimes you'll find a hat that has a rare logo, maybe one of the lesser used ones, and you can put that in your uh, title of your item and you can say that it was a rare logo. Another thing that you'll commonly see in high value unique hats is the three stripes on the side. Here's an example of that.
The next uh, category that you're gonna wanna consider when looking over the hat is what style it is. So here are the different styles that uh, you'll see. The first and really common is snapback. And so that literally means that's how the hat uh, is secured to your head. It snaps together back here, it's adjustable. And so snapback is a term that you'll see in item titles uh, all the time. The next style that you'll come across is strapback. You can see it's got a strap in the back and you uh, open this buckle and pull it through like that and that adjusts the hat. Another style that you'll see all the time in the description or the title of the listing is the trucker hat. Here's an example of that. So a traditional trucker hat has mesh in the back and foam piece in the front panel. And lastly, as far as style goes, is your fitted hat. And so that one will have a specific size inside rather than a one size fits all or adjustable. It's more of a specific size. And so that will kind of narrow down who can wear that hat. One of the absolute biggest factors that is gonna impact the resale value of your hat is the condition. Condition, condition, condition. That's really when you're reselling anything, but with hats, it's really important. So let's go over uh, the different parts of the hat that you wanna look uh, to check out and see how the condition is. First, you wanna start with the visor or the bill. And so this is uh, basically a flat bill. And so if it's supposed to be a flat bill, has someone bent it or curved it, um, you just wanna check out how flat it is or not flat. Some are already curved and that's okay, but um, you just don't want to be super damaged essentially. After checking over the visor, you wanna check out the embroidery. It's, it stinks, but sometimes even hats that are new with tags, the embroidery will be messed up. So I'm trying to get this one closer. You can see, you can see there are some errors in the embroidery of this one. And so this one will sell new with tags, but we'll still have to, in the item description list that the and embroidery, um, there's some errors in it. And what I would do for a hat like this is I would, in one of my photos, uh, just simply take a picture of my finger pointing to the error in the embroidery. The next part of the condition that you want to check out is the snapback, if it's a snapback or just whatever type of enclosure it is. I found a really nice hat that I thought would be super valuable. I was about to buy it and I checked out the snapback and it was broken and so it wouldn't be possible for someone to wear that hat. I don't have an example of a trucker hat right now, but here's one thing that you want to watch out for on those. Since the uh, front panel of the trucker hat is foam, so this area right here of a trucker hat, um, on vintage hats, what you'll see a lot of times is that foam has started to break down and it actually will be crumbling off. And so that might be a hat that you want to avoid unless someone would just be buying it for display only. But when it starts crumbling like that, um, probably most people wouldn't want to wear that hat. Next, you want to check the condition of the tag, the branding, and the size. Make sure it's still there. Sometimes in hats, people cut out the tag, and that really stinks because that's a big part of the resale value of your hat. Lastly, uh, you want to check out the sweatband. How gross is it, essentially? Is it super yellowed and disgusting looking? Um, if it is, and make sure you take a picture of that because if you skip over that and don't take a picture of it and you send that hat to somebody and they get it and see that it's pretty gross, that's something that they would have wanted uh, have known ahead of time. So be sure and call it out in your photos. The next factor that can determine the value of your hat is check out where it was made. Um, people that are into vintage hats and clothing that that are shopping here in the US, a lot of times they like to see that that product was made in USA. And so that's another uh, tip that you can look for and to make sure to call that out if it was made uh, in the United States. The next factor that you wanna think about is what material is the hat made out of? And so a lot of hats are made out of like cotton or polyester, but hats with um, that have sometimes a higher resale value are made of wool and like a corduroy. And so the more special the material of the hat, a lot of times the higher resale value it'll have. So all those factors that we just went over play a major part in making sure that you get the most resale value out of your hat. But that's just in sourcing hats, you know, when you make the initial purchase. You know, a lot of times they say you make your money when you actually buy your item. And so you, make, you wanna make sure that you're buying good items that are gonna um, resell for really good money. And so once you've done all that, the next part is listing your item. And I wanna give you some tips about that. The first thing when it comes to listing is you want to take awesome pictures. You want to take pictures where, you know, the background, there's not a lot going on. You want the hat to just stand out, um, be the main focus of the photo. You want to have really good lighting. You want to take, on eBay, it allows you for 12 pictures. 
And so if you want, take all 12 pictures so uh, someone can see every angle of the hat. You wanna see all angles of the inside, all angles of the outside, obviously. You wanna maybe do an up close of the logo, of the branding, of the size tag. Um, you And be honest, if the hat is in pre-owned condition or has errors, you wanna make sure to take pictures of the errors and so the buyer's not surprised when they get the hat. So after you've taken your photos, next comes making the item listing and the title of your listing plays a major role in whether your hat is going to actually sell through or not. You could do so much work uh, checking out all the factors that we talked about, checking off each box, but if you make a bad title uh, for your hat, it's possible that no one will ever see your listing and it won't sell. And so you want to go over everything that we talked about. You have 80 characters on eBay to get that, uh, to get the best title. And so you want to talk about if it's new, if it's new with tags an abbreviation that you can use is N W T. If it's vintage, you can spell out vintage or you could put the abbreviation, uh, V T G. Um, you can also use the term new old stock NOS for that one. Um, those are all really good abbreviations and terms that you can use. Um, you want to talk about if it is wool, corduroy, if it has the rope, if it is shark tooth, if it's got the diamond, if it's got the three stripes. All of those things are search terms that people looking for vintage hats will type into eBay. And so the more, um, the, the better that you describe your item, the better it's going to sell through. Obviously, you want to talk about the brand. Um, you want to make sure to put that in the title. You want to talk about if it was made in USA. You want to list the type of hat it is. So whether it's a snapback, strapback, fitted. If it has the big logo, be sure and call that out, big logo. And this is probably regional. Um, pretty much where I live, people call hats hats. <laughs> But where some people live, they call them caps. So if you have enough characters left in your title, you might actually put both terms, hat and cap, because depending on where someone lives, that's what they're gonna type into eBay. So thanks so much for watching the video up until this point, all the different factors um, that can help you sell your vintage hat for more money. Um, if you find this at all helpful at this point, please be sure and hit the like and subscribe button. I'm always putting out new videos with things that I've thrifted or found at garage sales to sell. And from time to time, I'm gonna make these specialty videos of how to sell certain items. And now I'm gonna show you uh, my thrift or my Facebook Marketplace vintage hat haul and I'll show you um, each hat. So I got a lot of 18 hats. I negotiated with a guy on Facebook. He had each hat listed at nine bucks. Actually, he didn't even have them all listed. I just happened to ask him if he had any more hats and we negotiated to $5 uh, per hat, which that sounds like quite a bit of money and it's more money than I typically ever pay for vintage hat. But what's special about these is uh, they're guaranteed to all be 25 plus years old because they are found in maybe like an old warehouse or storage unit that hadn't been opened for 25 years. And they were all brand new with tags. And so I thought that was going to be a super good deal. Let me show you what I got. So unfortunately, with the branding of the hats, none of them were those top five brands that I listed. But the majority of them were all officially licensed uh, NBA or MLB hats. First up, I got this Philadelphia 76ers hat, new with tags. Here's the tag on it. It is universal headwear and it is an officially licensed hat. I hope to get $20 plus shipping for that. By the way, when it comes to shipping, most hats ship out for under a pound, usually about the 10 ounce rate, rate which is about five bucks. Next is this New Orleans Saints hat. It's got the Saint uh, spell out on the back, new with tags. Um, I hope to get 35 plus shipping for this hat. I got two of these San Francisco Giants hats. Hope to get 30 each plus shipping on them. I got two Portland Trailblazers hats, red and black. Hope to get 27 plus shipping for each one of them. I got this New York Mets with the New York on the side and the Mets on the side. Um, here's a tag on it. Hope to get $30 plus shipping. Vintage NFL Atlanta Falcons. There's the back. Looking to get 26 plus shipping. Oakland A's MLB, two of them, hoping to get 25 plus shipping. Not really sure why this one was in the lot of sports hats. It is a Pontiac Tran Trans Am hat, two of them. Um, this exact hat on eBay is selling for 29 plus shipping. By the way, here's a special thing about this hat. This is considered a skinny snapback. You can see it's skinnier than a traditional uh, snapback. 
two vintage Detroit Pistons hats. Looking to get 27 plus shipping on each one of them. Two vintage Charlotte Hornets hats. Looking to get 27 plus shipping. These are the last two vintage Atlanta Hawks. Looking to get 20 plus shipping. So for my lot of uh, 18 hats, I spent $90 and I hope to make a total of 481. And so selling hats is a great way to make a few hundred bucks if you can buy a lot of them. If you found this video helpful at all, please be sure and give it a like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below with the best uh, vintage hat that you found recently and find me over at Instagram and send me a picture of it. I'm early bird picker on Instagram. Send me a picture and I'd love to see it. Thanks again. Thanks so much for watching.